to uh Yeah, we should pick up where we yeah. left off, is that cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit it. Is there a way that we can reshoot this? He's, they're concerned about the the, the lack of lighting and therefore the, the, the grain in, in the stuff with me in the back it's of the theater. Not, yeah, it also looks out of focus. It looks kind of soft as well. So it's got multiple problems. I mean, Does it look soft? Really? I can set up two lights and just do it. I guess. It doesn't bother me, though. Yeah, it's very flat, yeah. so getting it around more. But it's also very specular. You know, the shadow on her nose is, is pretty harsh. Keeping a little bit of uh, powder. You know, you've got those little... Like it looks like rolling papers, but it's patting people down, you know, that kind of stuff. Because you see these, on her, you get these really tough glints, it almost looks like glycerin, you know. It's, it's hard at this level because, you know, you don't have hair and makeup and you can't call someone and do it. But when it's something's glaring, you just have to, like, say, look, this is tough. If you're paying attention to these verticals, you're dividing the frame into thirds, but you're not paying as much attention to the horizontal. You know, so his eyes are pretty much on this center line. Put his eyes up more at that third point, her eyes up at that third point. And like that shot of her, you know, it's just very centered. So you want her over on the right, her breathing space to the left, and her on the left, breathing space to the right. So these two shots should feel more alike, like it's like they're in totally different spaces. She's in this place with this kind of lighting, she's in space with this kind of lighting, yet, you know, they're two feet apart. And she's dead centered. So have her over here and have her shoulder over here. She's really great on camera. So natural. See, can I ask a question? Sure. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, but I don't know if, the, if this is relevant at all, but like the idea of, and maybe this doesn't relate to characters that are in the same space, but if like a certain lighting kind of reflects, or like, Maybe, a, a, maybe the right phrase is like a psychological lighting or like a lighting scheme that represents the character. Absolutely. That, that to me is the epitome of what we're talking about. You know, you look at the Godfather and you look at those raccoon eye sockets and no light hitting off the eyeball to strip those people of their souls. You know, now we're talking about like real deep psychological communication happening on a visual level. Like, but what's the story? Who are these characters? We just have two people sitting at a table for a lighting demo, and I'm like, okay, well, you we have have never, story. yeah, you have to have a story, you have to have characters, so let's make up a story, and let's say, you know, he's been you know, stalking her, and it's gonna get to the point where he's gonna kill her, and so, you know, here he is with his dark, you know, soul. That's, that's a terribly sophomoric example. The first thing I ever shot was called a celebrity. So what I did to kind of weigh his character down was everywhere he went, his TV backlight, and I tried not to have it be too screamingly obvious, but he would be standing in a group of people and he would be the only one with like a TV rim light. And his TV world, he could never escape it. He couldn't just be a regular guy. No one let, allowed him to do that. The, the thing that gets tough here is if you shoot something like this, a longer lens, then it, everything, the movement becomes very magnified, right? So it's very difficult to get the background out of focus because it's video, so you're wide and close and then the whole world in focus. So like a 24mm f1.4, so you're shooting that at like a two. So you've got the wide and close and your movement's not magnified, but you've still got your background out of focus, right? I think this lighting situation and how you used it overall worked really well. She has just enough contrast. The background choice is great. This is out of focus behind her. This, this scene was, I thought, very successfully realized. But this framing, or this size shot, is beautiful. A negative fill could help you, help you yeah. tremendously here, so like a six by black or something could help knock down a lot of the ambient light. This, this streams video more than anything, so restaging this scene some other place against a darker wall would be huge. Just because that's where it was in the real space doesn't mean you have to honor it. Your first impulses, like you look at your opening frames, your initial impulses of framing are good. And then the shot keeps running and you're like, oh, I'm afraid, let's get more and more centered with it. Yeah. But look at your initial impulses, they're dead on. Pay attention to what you're doing naturally as opposed to when your fear takes over. I'm so glad you guys sought out the Koyana Scotsy shot. I mean, it was like, 
kind of uncanny. I, I, uh, I, there was no intention. I didn't intentionally do that, but uh, it was just, I knew what I was doing that I had seen the shot before and I really liked it. It's probably swimming around your subconscious. Yeah. yeah. It's so like a uh, <laughs> Hedwig and the Angry Inch and then if they're both supposed to be lit like for film shoot, then I would just make his lighting look like her light because that's the way porn always looks anyway, I'm told. <laughs> uh, the only thing I would have changed would be, uh, what's your wife's name? Nina. Nina. Over on the sofa, she's got that practical next to her. If you could have put a little edge on her that felt like it was coming from that motivated practical. See, the film, by the time it was halfway in, you like so had me on the ride. I was just like, we can continue to talk about all the little picky things. But at this point, I'm like so caught up in this thing and like I'm just not even caring in a way. But once you try to turn the sound off and you start looking at it, the production design, the location calls with the darker walls and everything, it's like so often you just get thrown in little white rooms. If it's not a darker tone, you're screwed, you know? So to some degree, he's the female character, and so to some degree, his like flatter, softer lighting does, does work. This framing, beautiful, you know? This balance, the, the camera, the feeling of the amount of motion, like what's going on in the scene. You know, there's like comedy comedy, and then there's like real comedy. And this this isn't Seinfeld. Yeah, this is so like a, a fictional narrative feature, and th those over the shoulders feel absolutely right. I love her performance as a character. She was. We were so lucky to get her. For whatever reason, I, I remember my brain being a little bit flustered with that location. I was like, why don't I know how to approach this? One of the biggest seeming contradictions in my life that I've had to reconcile is what it means to do your best without caring about the result. That seems like a contradiction. You know, I came to understand that any caring about the result is energy that is invested in the future. You can only do something about this moment. You know, I'd have these moments where I would take some action and the result would be the desired result, but my action was deeply flawed. I did not do what it was I intended. I lucked out. Was that what I'm looking for? At other moments where I did exactly what I wanted to do, I felt totally in the flow state, and the result was absolutely not the right result. Is that what I'm looking for? Yes, it is. Yeah. The moment where you are absolutely in the flow state. Zen and the Art of Archery. I recommend the book highly. Eyeline is specifically from camera looking through a monitor. So, you know, if I've got the shot of you two and you have to go and we have to do your close-up and I have to remember and determine exactly, like, okay, you should be looking this far off the mat box or I need to set up a C-stand and put a little X of tape here. And that, getting that experience of where exact eye line should be will also help influence like, exactly where your frame is. The honesty of this scene is just so phenomenal. I mean, this, these moments of like, she doesn't cheat on him or tries not to, and, and like all of this that I'm talking about, the, the story, the characters, the, the performances, everything at this moment, I'm like completely being carried. It's a real tribute to the strength of the film that at this moment, I'm just on the roller coaster. Yeah, you know what would be really smart in this day and age of technology? To, on the camera, have a little small monitor that shows what the other camera's seeing. Oh, how great would that be? I mean, we could send a man to the moon. Come on. With the equivalent of a digital watch worth of computing. I love this line out of focus back there. That's, you know, you start to get shots like that with a long lens and out of focus and a nice attention to graphic, how lines lead you around in the frame. I mean, that's one of the nicest shots going. This all get, has to get knocked down a few stops to make sense with the night stuff that we're intercutting with. What were you doing here? We were, I was sitting in the backseat. Yeah, I'm directing right to the left of him, and we're just we're, we're driving until they drive through light, and then we hit the, so we, they just kept running the lines. They cried. They yeah. really, well, this power really. of the scene, I mean, by this point, I'm just like so completely hooked in. That, that close-up of the hands, like people will often like throw away extreme close-ups, like, oh, it's just a, you know, an ECU, you know. Don't worry about it. I mean, that's what Hitchcock told us, right? It's like the thing is as big on the screen as its importance in the story of that moment. Um, you guys can uh, call on me in 
future, do you have my information? No. 